this is scientist Frank Tiffin. Ever since I could remember, I've always had a fascination for aquatic creatures, how they live and how they breathe. After obtaining my PhD in aquatic biology, I was given the opportunity to go out to the Arctic to research ice fish. I knew I wouldn't get this chance very often, so I packed up all of my previous research and studies and headed for the icy land. 1st of June, the helicopter dropped me and my crewmates off at the landing pad about five miles from the base, which was located next to a frozen lake where most of our research would be carried out. Third of June, after a day or two of settling in, my work began. I walked over to the frozen lake, cut a small hole in the ice and started my research. First thing to do was to see if there was any life within the lake. 8th of June, I had been at the research base just over a week now and to my disappointment I still hadn't come across any life in the lake. I wouldn't give up though. I came all this way for my research and was determined to return with results. 21st of June, finally! My life monitor picked up some information in the lake. There was life! Now I just had to find out what was living down there. It was probably some basic arctic char, but I was looking forward to studying it nonetheless. 28th of June, my tracking equipment and sensors still couldn't pick up what was living in the lake. At this point, I was beginning to get very frustrated as I knew there was something down there. Why couldn't my equipment pick anything up? It made no sense. 5th of July, this is where it started to get weird. It was like any other day at the base. I'd been there for around a month now. I made my way to the lake once again. I switched on my equipment to see that my life tracking sensors were off the charts. I had never seen my equipment pick up such a big density of life in a body of water before. I thought this can't be real. Like, how have I not been able to see this before? Is my equipment malfunctioning? I double checked my equipment and sure enough, everything was working just fine. There really was a huge amount of life in this lake. Scrambling to get my thoughts together, I looked for my underwater night vision camera and slid it through the hole in the ice to see if I could see anything down inside the lake. I don't know what fully I expected to see down there, but I can tell you that my heart sunk when all I saw was darkness. I must have been there for around 45 minutes, just staring into the darkness of my camera monitor. I knew there was something down there. I kept catching faint flickers of light and changes in the water pattern. Eventually, I packed up my stuff and headed back to the base. When I got back to base, my crewmates told me that we had orders to leave on the 15th. We were supposed to present our research findings to the company on the 23rd. Now, as you can probably guess, I refused. I was adamant that I was going to stay and find out what was living in that lake. Twentieth of July. Ever since my equipment detected that there was life beneath the ice, I was out on the lake all day, every day, to see if I could find out what was living in the water. With all of my crewmates gone, the week of isolation in the base by myself 
was definitely taking its toll. But I was still hopeful. As day became night, I was just about to pack up and head in and call it a day. When I heard this low-pitched rumble, it was coming from the lake. There it was again. What was I hearing? My heart was racing. I had never heard anything about a creature making a noise like this before. I grabbed my camera and fed it through the hole in the ice again. I looked and looked, but I still couldn't see any sign of life. I waited by the lake for the rest of that night, until morning in hopes I could possibly hear it again. But nothing happened. Twenty-first of July. That whole night, I didn't get a wink of sleep. After hearing that sound, I could not leave the lake. What if I missed the next one? What could it have been? Some undiscovered creature humans have never seen before, or some sort of whale in a lake? Thoughts were racing around my head when suddenly, I felt this big rumbling underneath me from in the lake. It started as just a small vibration, but then evolved into a violent thunderous shaking that threw me off my feet. Massive tentacles came crashing through the ice, lifted into the sky, and slammed onto the frozen lake, sending cracks throughout the ice. The ice in the middle of the tentacles then shattered, and crashing up from beneath it came something I thought I would never see. I looked on at a creature. It had four massive eyes on an oval shaped head that was covered in scales. Its mouth took up half of its head and it had over 100 teeth shaped like spearheads. It looked at me with an intense gaze. I just stood there. I studied aquatic creatures all of my life. Here was one that has possibly never been seen by humans before. I wasn't going to let this opportunity pass. I held out my hand to it, hoping it would sense that I meant no harm. My heart was pounding. It just looked back at me with those ferocious eyes. I stood there for at least 30 seconds, waiting for it to move. Finally, I saw it raise a tentacle and slammed it down right where I was standing. I jumped and dodged out of the way. It was time to run. I started running back towards the base, trudging through the snow. But the 
have followed me. He was coming after me. I'd obviously angered him in some way. Probably because I disturbed his home in the lake. I reached the base. I ran inside and slammed the door shut, locking it behind me. I reinforced the door and all the windows by pushing cabinets and chairs against them. Then, I ran to the comms room in the base and dialed for an emergency evacuation. I shouted and I tried to explain that this creature was attacking me, but I heard no response. I ran into my office, threw a bookcase in front of the door and started gathering up all of my equipment and research papers. This creature was attacking me, but I was going to escape with all of my work. I was not going to lose everything that I discovered and all of the research progress that I made. It was just not going to happen. I was running around and packing everything into boxes when suddenly I heard this massive crash on the side of the base. The whole base shook. Oh, that creature must have been really angry. I didn't know what to do. How was I going to get out of this? Then I heard another crash. The creature was trying to break into the base. I was shaking with fear. I peered out of my office window to see a tentacle fully wrapped around one of the walls of the building. He knew where I was. A tentacle slammed onto the roof of the base. And all my papers flew from my desk everywhere. Getting soaked from the water residue. My test tubes broke. All of the equipment and knowledge I had written down for my research was gone. A tentacle slammed the side of the wall. My microscope fell and shattered. My research samples spilled everywhere. All of the progress I had made, my whole career, lost. That was when I realised I was more concerned about my work than my own life. I was more upset that my research was destroyed and the fact that these could be my last few moments alive. All this time I had been thinking about studying these aquatic animals when I was neglecting all of the other things in my life. That was when I heard the sound of a helicopter. They must have heard my call. I peered out of my office window see a helicopter hovering close to the ground, about 50 feet away from the base. Make a run for it! I heard a voice in a megaphone come from the helicopter. Mustering up all of my courage, I jumped out of the window and sprinted towards the helicopter. The man in the helicopter held out his hand to me. Then, he pulled me onto the helicopter, and we were lifted up into the sky. I watched down below as I saw the creature completely destroy the research base. That was when I made the decision that I would get my priorities straight in life, and focus on the things that mattered the most.